Hey guys, it's Rico Beer. Welcome to another edition of the Five Star Zone. And it's Big Ten Week 5 preview. A lot of big games, a little bit of a separation week. We're going to find out who are some of the real contenders and who are some of the real pretenders. I'm going to spotlight a few of the games that really are of note to myself and, and probably you as well. I'm going to start off game at noon. Indiana. 4-0, looking to go 5-0, taking on Maryland team, a Maryland team that is uh, sitting there at 3-1, and a Maryland team that, you know, lost at home to Michigan State, but they bounced back. They won a game on the road at VTech, a Maryland team that's coming here looking to uh, – I don't really know what Maryland is. Year to year, Maryland has a ton of talent, but I don't know if they can just make it happen – Coming in there, uh, Edwards at quarterback, eight touchdowns, two interceptions. They got the wide receiver, but they're going to be on the road. And on the road, going up against an Indiana Hoosier team, coached by uh, Coach Signetti, who, man, he's flipped this thing from what Tom Allen had did last year. He went out into the portal, and this is a different Indiana team. They've already eclipsed last year's win total of three wins with four already, and they're looking to go to five. They're seven point. They're a touchdown favorite in the game. And Indiana, look, this may be their first real test, going up against a tougher talent, a better caliber opponent in Maryland, hosting Maryland. But right now, man, they are sitting there. They got a number nine rush defense. They're number three in total defense. But their offense is just clicking as well. Like they're a complete and total team. And so they don't have a tough schedule in the Big Ten. This is a team that could find their way sneaking into the conversation of the playoffs, sneaking into the conversation of the Big Ten championship game, simply because they're not going to be playing a ton of, a ton of the top teams that we that we normally think about when you think of the Big Ten. But yeah, Rourke may have been the best transfer quarterback pickup. In the Big Ten, Indiana has him eight touchdowns so far this year. Zero, I repeat, zero interceptions. So, yeah, they're going out there getting this thing done. Um, and, and I think that Indiana's going to roll, and I think that Indiana's going to continue this, and Indiana's going to end up being 5-0, and oh, and, and they're going to start to put Big Ten teams on notice because here's the thing, Signetti has put a killer instinct. They This team has swag. This team just doesn't win. This team tries to beat you. They try to embarrass you. They don't play take plays off. They don't take game. They don't take anything off. There is no taking a knee and running out the clock. They are trying to put up as many points as possible. They had a 77-point game. Heck, I mean, just last week they were trying to hit 60. They're, like, There's no slowdown in them. Normally in the Big Ten, you get a big enough lead, you power it down, you look forward to next week. Signetti is putting his imprint on this program. This is a killer program with some swag. Indiana, yeah, I said it, IU football. Something to watch out for in the Big Ten. Another game of note, you're going to have uh, under two undefeated teams in Illinois and Penn State. Penn State was a team that a lot of people had, you know, planned on being at the top of the Big Ten. But kind of like Indiana, I don't think anybody saw Illinois and Burbilama really making the impact that they have. Uh, they go to Nebraska last week, and they, they defeat Nebraska in overtime. And that was a game that I, I, I thought Nebraska was really going to – I thought that was going to be the Nebraska coming out party, but instead Nebraska goes to overtime and scores zero points. Stop me if you've heard that before. They just don't score when they get to overtime. Illinois handled Nebraska, and, you know, Alt Luke Altmaier – Maybe a surprise in the Big Ten at quarterback. He's got 10 touchdowns already. Uh, Illinois coming up with a, a, a big rush defense, the 35th rush defense in the nation. Why do I say that? Because Penn State's going to try to run that ball with the dual backs, with Singleton. And, you know, I look at this, and I thought this was going to be a close game. But then Bielema kind of shoots off his mouth. And he talks about the environment at Penn State and says, well, you know, the Nebraska environment is probably the toughest environment. Hey, Bert, you may not want to say that. I can tell you this. I'm not a big Penn State fan. But nothing, and I mean nothing in the Big Ten, 
may be more intimidating than a big, I mean, than a Penn State night game, especially if it is a whiteout game. You may want to just not give them fuel to come after you. And I think that it, I think that Penn State will take that as a slam. I would. And I think that Penn State will come out with fire. I would. And I think that Penn State will bring Illinois back down to earth. Um, yeah, I, I, I was just shocked. I, I really was shocked. I think Drew Aller will lead this team. And I, and I think the Penn State's a heavy favorite at home. And it's not that they needed motivation, but man, you 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 were so idiotic. You gave them motivation. Why would you do that? I I I don't understand it. But yeah, Penn State uh, night game against um, Illinois. I think it's going to be a little bit of a separator. I think Illinois comes back down to the pack. I think Penn State keeps pace with the top teams in the Big Ten which leads us into uh, maybe the surprise victory last week was Michigan uh, upsetting USC. It was a slight upset, but Michigan was a home underdog. USC, bad game planning. And, and you know, we find out later this week that Bear Alexander, the big defensive lineman, is now opting out of the year. He's going to redshirt. I'm assuming he's going to transfer because, heck, why not? He went to four high schools. He's gone to three different colleges. So it kind of fits the pattern. But Michigan taking on Illinois for the Little Brown Jug. Michigan is favored by nine points in this game. I think Sharon Moore figured out what Michigan's new identity is going to be. And it's going to be very service academy-like. It's going to be run the ball, run the ball, run the ball, punt, or run the ball, break big runs, score big touchdown, and win games. You're going to have to lean on your defense. You're going to have to lean on that secondary and Will Johnson. You're going to hope to hope that your, your special team sets you up in good spots because I don't think you're going to get a lot of passing yards out of Alex Orgy. He's going to be the quarterback, and you saw he is just not a passer. It's going to be more run, run, and run, whether it's Khalil Mullings, whether it's Donovan Edwards, or maybe it's Orgy on the keeper. You may see his jet sweep or two with Samaj Morgan, but it's going to be a lot of a short passing game, screen games. I don't think that you're going to – I mean, here's a case in point. You can't even bet on passing yardage of Alex Orgy on, on uh, betting sites. I looked at FanDuel. You, you can't. You're going to run the ball, and you're going to run the ball, and you're going to run the ball, and it's going to be boring. But that's how Michigan is going to win games this year is running the ball, leaning on that top defense. And here's where it helps you. Uh, Minnesota is 56. They're the 56 best rushing defense, which means Michigan's going to kind of have their way running the ball. Here's the other thing. Minnesota is going to have to try to uh, keep Michigan off the field. Now, I don't think it's going to be as many three and outs as you saw last week against USC, especially in the second half. But Minnesota can't really run the ball. As a matter of fact, they're 108th in rush offense. They're going to have to try to pass the ball, which means that Michigan's going to – that defense is, you know, between uh, Graham and Grant, they're going to pin their ears back. They're going to go after the quarterback. You know, this is where you're going to see a couple of interceptions from that Michigan secondary, and I think Michigan will win this game easily because I don't think that Minnesota will be able to hang with them. The only way Minnesota wins this thing is Minnesota – and I think the key just to beating Michigan this year is you have to be able to jump out on them early and get at least a two touchdown lead, forcing them out of that run package that they're going to do so well. If you force Alex Orgy to pass, that's when I think you have a chance. But I don't think Minnesota is going to be able to do that. And I think that Michigan will win another game where they're not going to be able to pass the ball. But you know what? You don't care if you're a Wolverine fan. You just got the W. <clears throat> Leads into the final game. Uh, night game is going to be on Peacock. Uh, Michigan State hosting Ohio State. Mark D'Antonio, former coach of Michigan State and former defensive coordinator of Ohio State, gets his name put in the Spartan Ring of Honor. D'Antonio was a D.C. when the Buckeyes won their national title. D'Antonio was the head coach during Michigan State's heyday. When Michigan State was winning the Big Ten, when Michigan State made it to the college football playoff, he's going to get his honors. He's going to get his roses uh, Saturday night at Spartan Stadium. Michigan State coming in a heavy underdog at home. Ohio State's 24 and a, 23 and a half point favorite. If you're Michigan State, you got to play a perfect game. I mean, there's really no other way about it. Aiden Childs cannot turn the ball over. This team cannot shoot themselves in the foot. 
Uh, Aiden Childs cannot miss wide open wide receivers, and receivers have to make sure they catch every pass. Nate Carter can't drop short touchdowns in the end zone. MSU has to play an A plus game, not just an A game, an A plus game, especially on offense if you want to give yourself any chance of beating the Buckeyes. Why? Because Ohio State, kind of like Michigan, is all about the big plays. Ohio State beats you because uh, Jay Sean will run for, you know, 70 yards or, or all of a sudden, you know, a Mecca uh, uh, Abua will, you know, catch a pass and go 65 yards or the freshman will go 75 yards. That's them. Ohio State is all about the big plays. If you're Michigan State, you got to limit their big play opportunity. You have to make Will Howard and that Buckeye offense grind it out and try to get, you know, some field goals. You have to make Ohio State uncomfortable. Ohio State has mastered the art of making everybody else uncomfortable. And let's face it, geez, what, the last five times this, these two teams have played, it's just been a boat race where Ryan Day has just called off the dogs and said enough's enough, and we're not trying to embarrass the Spartans. And the way the point spread looks now, it looks to be the same. Aiden Child is averaging over two interceptions a game or at least two turnovers a game. You cannot – have this. Childs has to play the smartest game he's ever played in his life. He's got to go out there and try to carve up the Buckeyes. He's got to go out there and use his legs when necessary. And you know what? This is not all on Aiden Childs. The running back situation, whether it's Lynch Adams or whether it's Nate Carter, have to actually show up. And that means your offensive line is going to have to create some holes. The offense is is not putting in putting themselves in a pretty spot. Ohio State's defense is number two overall. Now, a lot of that is because Ohio State is playing no one. If you're Michigan State, you're going to be the toughest test that Ohio State has had. Can you live up to that challenge? Can you make Ohio State comfortable, especially early in the game? Can you use the energy of the home crowd and Mark D'Antonio being there to jumpstart this team and maybe jump ahead of the Buckeyes? Because the worst thing that can happen is you fall behind and it becomes wash, rinse, repeat of the past previous years where you're out of the game, where you're not even scoring points, where you're wondering, will this team even score a touchdown? That's going to be the thing for the Spartans. If you turn the ball over, I mean, look, last week against Boston College, Michigan State almost eliminated the penalties. They had three penalties and one was on the kicker and Jonathan Kim kicking the ball out of bounds. If you're MSU, can you play a perfect game? Can you have no... Very few to very to almost no penalties. Turnovers. You can't give a team like Ohio State extra opportunities because, newsflash, they don't need it. Can you just play within yourself? Can you go out there? This has got to be Aiden Child's best game ever. He's got to use his arms. He's got to use his legs. And he needs the running game to support him. And by God, if you have Montori Foster running wild, you have to hit him. It's been three games this season. Foster wide open. The play was schemed up correctly. He was overthrown. You can't have that. And if you're Michigan State, it looks like you will have your talented freshman Nick Marsh back playing for you. Jonathan Smith spoke about that earlier in the week. Looks like Marsh will be back in the game. That's a plus if you're the Spartans because I, I, I think the Childs has better chemistry with Nick Marsh than he does anybody else. You also saw Jack Velling sighting. Uh, in, in the game against Boston College, if you can incorporate those, cut down on the turnovers, maybe, just maybe, just maybe, you'll have a competitive game. You turn the ball over, you get a lot of penalties, this thing will be over at halftime, and Spartan fans will be headed home to watch the rest of the uh Alabama Georgia game on TV. That's your Big Ten preview of week five for the week. Keep liking, keep watching, keep subscribing, keep telling your friends about the five star zone. I'm your host, Rico Beard. I will be back in a few days to recap everything that we saw of the weekend and see what I got right, what I got wrong. Until then, I'll see you later.